In this lesson, we're going to look at specific examples of electrophilic additions to alkenes. And in all of these reactions, we're going to find the alkene reacting as a nucleophile. Some things to pay attention to in these reactions are the site selectivity and stereoselectivity. Is Markovnikov's rule followed, and is the addition syn or anti? as well as the details of the mechanism. Remember, as you're learning new reactions, to think mechanistically. This will allow you to make connections to other reactions and make the process of learning organic chemistry much easier. The three types of electrophiles we're going to focus on in this lesson are the hydrohalic acids, HX, hydronium ion, H3O+, and the elemental halogens, X2. In the first two cases, we can recognize very clearly significant partial positive charge on the hydrogen atom in these structures. This makes the hydrogen a key electron acceptor in these species. In the elemental halogen, we have a symmetric electron distribution. However, we can think of each halogen as connected to a good leaving group. Thus, we can think of each halogen as having a kind of virtual partial positive charge and the potential to act as an electrophile through electron flow like this. Let's begin with electrophilic additions of the hydrohalic acids, especially HCl and HBr. And here we're going to look at both the products and the mechanism of these reactions. The formal name for this reaction type is hydrohalogenation, since a hydrogen and a halogen are added across the atoms of the pi bond. HCl, HBr, and HI can all be used here. HF cannot be used because it's not acidic enough to protonate a double bond. Notice that the products of this reaction are alkyl halides, containing a halogen atom linked to a tetrahedral or alkyl carbon, and the alkyl halides must be secondary or tertiary for mechanistic reasons that we'll see in a second. The mechanism here involves electrophile association, or A sub E, followed by nucleophile association. So the first step of the mechanism is our prototypical electrophilic addition step, in which the alkene coordinates to the electrophilic atom, here very clearly the hydrogen because of its partial positive charge, in the reagent. At the same time, the HX bond breaks. Here I'm using Cl as an example. And this is why we think of this as A sub E plus proton transfer. From the reagent's perspective, this is a proton transfer. Immediately we're confronted with a site selectivity issue of which carbon to use in bond formation to the hydrogen, the less substituted carbon or the more substituted carbon. Hydrohalogenation follows Markovnikov's rule because we're about to generate a carbocation intermediate. And so the most favorable bonding pattern here involves forming a bond to the less substituted or terminal alkene carbon in this case. This results in the formation of the more substituted carbocation, here a tertiary carbocation. Notice that an important byproduct of the first step is Cl-, the conjugate base of HCl. Cl- is a decent nucleophile, especially in the presence of a strong electrophile as a carbocation, and so it can associate to the carbocation in an A sub n elementary step leading to the alkyl halide product. Notice here that we can draw an interesting analogy to the SN1 mechanism. If we ignore what's happening in the first stage of this mechanism, the second stage is exactly like the second step of SN1, coordination of a nucleophile to a carbocation. The two mechanisms differ only in how the carbocation is generated. In the SN1 mechanism, the carbocation comes not from A sub E plus proton transfer, but from D sub N, departure of a leaving group, say iodide, from the electrophilic carbon. Both mechanisms are related in the sense that the stability of this carbocation intermediate is key to determining the course of the first step. And carbocation stability explains why the alkyl halide products of hydrohalogenation must be either secondary or tertiary. Because the halide anion coordinates to the carbocation, Secondary or tertiary alkyl halide products imply a secondary or tertiary carbocation. Because primary carbocations don't form, we can't arrive at a primary alkyl halide product using hydrohalogenation. One thing to notice at this point is that hydrohalogenation is the reverse reaction of elimination. Elimination of HX from the product would give the starting material. This raises an interesting thermodynamic question, as it seems like either addition or elimination must be favored since these reactions are reverses of one another. We're going to resolve this conundrum in a second, but for the time being, let's try to work out the thermodynamics of hydrohalogenation using bond dissociation enthalpies. And the idea here is pretty straightforward. Using a bonds made and broken analysis and Using typical values for the bond energies of the bonds made and broken, we can get an estimate of the reaction enthalpy change by summing up 
the bond dissociation enthalpies for all the broken bonds and subtracting the bond dissociation enthalpies for all the bonds that are made. These delta HBD bond dissociation enthalpies are positive, so we get enthalpy back every time a bond is made, and we have to invest enthalpy every time a bond is broken. In hydrohalogenation, the bonds made are the CX and CH bonds in the product, and the bonds broken are the carbon-carbon pi bond and the HX bond in the starting materials. Here's a table of bond dissociation energies containing bonds relevant to this reaction. For HX and CX here, we have HF, HCl, HBr, and HI, with a decrease in bond dissociation energy partly due to the size difference between the atoms that increases as we go from F to I. Adding things up here, we find that the bonds broken are the CC pi bond, which is 84 kilocalories per mole, and the HX bond, which for, let's say, chlorine, is 103 kilocalories per mole. The bonds made include CX, which for chlorine is 85 kilocalories per mole, and the CH bond, which is 105 kilocalories per mole. What we find when we add all these numbers up, and again, this is for hydrohalogenation involving HCl, is that the reaction overall is only negative 3 kilocalories per mole in enthalpy. So this is almost thermoneutral. If you do the calculation for HF, hydrohalogenation of HF, you'll notice that this reaction is positive in enthalpy change, and this is one of the reasons why hydrohalogenation with HF is not possible. And if you do the calculations for HBr and HI, you'll notice that both of these are almost thermoneutral as well. Nonetheless, these numbers are negative. Hydrohalogenation reactions are exothermic for HCl, HBr, and HI. Why is it then that we can convert an alkyl halide back to an alkene through elimination? Well, remember, when we run an elimination reaction, a base is included, and this is usually a strong base with a strong thermodynamic driving force to remove a proton from the substrate. Even though elimination is slightly endothermic, it's the protonation of this base that drives elimination toward products. 